generally speaking, you will not become a pro-level uh, software lead-level developer programmer within 30 days. It's, it's not possible. Otherwise, why would software developers make so much money if it was so easy, right? You can't even become a plumber in 30 days, you know. Well, you know what? Plumbing can be pretty complex, so scratch that. You get the idea. But what you can do within 30 days is get a level of skill that allows you to do entry-level work, get into the freelance game, become an entry-level uh, junior coder. I wouldn't necessarily put you as developer, per se, but nonetheless, something where you can make money. Now, especially if you get into the freelance game, there's so much work out there for small business that doesn't require ultra-high-level programming skills to make a lot of money. I'm thinking WordPress developers, Drupal developers, general web professionals need to put up a good-looking site. You may use a template here. You may use WordPress with a theme, add some plugins, set up their, S, uh, set up their social strategy. It's kind of a hodgepodge of skill sets that uh, would be very difficult for the vast majority of small business owners, but very approachable for you. It's, uh, it's a good way to get your feet into the uh, whole development uh, world, if you will. It's low level, meaning it's basic stuff, but it can be very profitable, especially if you're freelancing and you're following some good principles in terms of how to set up your freelance business, how to charge people, how to structure projects, and so forth. One of the things that I teach is that you can leverage other people's very advanced skills and put it all together and become uh, kind of like a conductor, a conductor of an orchestra. You don't need, necessarily need to be an expert uh, I don't know, flute player or something or trombone player to be someone who conducts the, uh, the orchestra or the band. So a concrete example, of course, is if you're a WordPress professional for small business owners. They may approach you and need to update their theme, may need to add in a certain plugin, may need to hook up their social media. So these are, again, simple examples where you don't need to be an expert coder or programmer to be able to do this, but again, small business owners have a tough time with that. That all said and done, there's a couple exceptions to this rule. So my first you know what, my first professional gig as a web developer, and I characterize a developer, a web developer, as somebody who's actually uh, writing uh, code that turns a website into a database-driven system with logic and with uh, an end-user goal, etc. And I've told this story before, I won't get into the details here, where I developed an early version of a social networking app and it was my very first database-driven system. Although I had been writing code for a few years prior, that's, that's no question, JavaScript and, of course, HTML, um, and a little bit of Perl, but I was not a database guy. And I was able to put together a very functional working app in 30 days, learning as I went. But that being said, I did have a couple years, or a few years, uh, more than a few years, of experience writing code and managing projects. You see, whether you're managing a front-end website, web design with uh, some basic JavaScript, etc., cetera, uh, you're tying into some Perl scripts, or you're managing something a little bit more substantial, you know, a database-driven system, the skill sets of managing that project are the same. The things I talk about and I teach, best practices, you know, modular code, simple code, good naming conventions, etc., etc., etc. These things carry, carry through regardless of the type of program you're doing. In fact, somebody posted, I'm not sure it was on uh, Twitter or Instagram or maybe it was YouTube, where they said that they were game developers and they were doing game development, but they learned a lot about being a good game developer by doing my videos, which is largely web and general purpose programming. Why? Because those principles carry through. Now, this is going to freak people out. I was able to jump on the game fairly quickly as a developer because what I did is I used the principles of system development that I learned while developing centralized filtration systems for aquariums. This sounds very weird. Now, my first business 
One of the things that we did is we would import rare fish from all over the world. We'd have rows and rows of tanks all connected together through plumbing, and then this plumbing was connected to a centralized filtration system. And in building these systems, I learned about building systems. And strangely enough, building central fil filtration systems for uh, rare fish and for fish is very similar in many respects to building systems or software systems or web apps. It's strangely enough, I'll give you one example. So when we were building these systems, we started off with simple eight tank systems. So we had eight tanks, four rows, two rows of four stacked on top of each other, plumbed together with uh, the ends. The ends were half inch pipes and the outs were one inch pipes coming out go through a central filtration system which was on, at the bottom level of the rack and would come back up again. Now what we discovered is that if we went too big, meaning if we had, I remember we built a system that had, I think it was like 15 tanks or 20 tanks and four tanks up and we used the same plumbing. What happened there, it became too complex, there was too much pressure and we couldn't get enough water to the top roll. So the basic lesson there was that when you have overly complex systems, um, the cost, uh, it, it just doesn't work. And the cost that you're trying to save by plumbing together a whole bunch of tanks, too many, was prohibitive because we would have to have gotten much larger pumps, much larger piping. So what we found were smaller, simpler systems were much easier to maintain, much easier to build, and failed much less often. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, it sounds very familiar. If any experienced developers are watching this, it sounds very, very familiar. What you'll find as you develop projects, if you have more than three or four people on a project, optimally three, the level of complexity increases quite a bit because you have that overhead of organizing several people. If you have a system where your complexity in your data store increases depends on the situation. To a certain extent, all of a sudden, what you find, the complexity, it doesn't go from, you know, this is zero complexity and difficulty. As your system becomes uh, more complex, rather, the system cost goes, it doesn't go like this, not linear. All of a sudden, it goes boom, like this. So with just a little bit more complexity, your cost of development shoots up quite a bit. So you want to make sure you want to keep your systems, your software systems, uh, as not so complex. You want to, you know, you want to make sure you don't hit that uh, that level of complexity where your cost shoots up because it just it becomes a nightmare to maintain. Anyway, this is very high level, very loose. Uh, the point is, is that you can take skill sets in terms of organizing projects and so forth, and they're transferable. That's why uh, directly when I say if you are uh, fairly confident with JavaScript. Uh, for you to move from JavaScript programming to Python programming or to C Sharp programming to Java programming, etc., won't be such a leap. If you understand managing projects, those project management skills will transfer to other uh, types of uh, project development. Anyhow, so generally speaking, yes, you will not become uh, a lead, a, a professional level programmer within 30 days. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen. But you can find yourself in a, position where, in a position where you can earn money and start building those skill sets within 30 days if you follow the proper training. And also there's a question of talent, there's a question of where you come from, etc. I was able to jump in quickly again because I had a background building these filtration systems and I learned a lot of lessons about system design. And I, I literally, they, they, they worked 100% in software design, strangely enough. Anyway, that's it for today. Bye-bye. Let me give you a quick view from the place. You've probably seen it before, but hey, I might be getting a new place, so this view might be bye-bye. You never know. Bye-bye.